So we want to look at equal sets. We want to know when two or more sets are equal to themselves. So we are looking at example. So we have set A. Set A contains the element 2, 1, 4, 3. B contains element 2, 1, 4, 3, 1, 4. And C are the elements of the first four counting numbers. And D contains the element 4, 1, 3, 5. Now we have the following observation. You observe that this set A is equal to set B. So the reason is this. So let's look at them. Let's look at them properly. So set A, set A is equal to... So remember, in writing a set, order does not matter. For instance, it's not a must that I should write 1 before I write 2. It's not a must that I should write 3 before I write 4. So order is not important. You can write it in any way you, you like. So it's not a must that 1 will come before 2 and 3 will come before 4. No. So this set, we have 2, we have 1, we have 4, we have 3. Then another thing to mention in a set is that repetition is not allowed in a set. So repetition is not allowed in a set. For instance, if you are listing a set of mathematical sets, you have a ruler. You cannot have a ruler again. So there is only one ruler in a mathematical set and so on. So each element are different from each other. So this set B, we are going to rewrite this. So this set B is the sentence as writing 2, 1, 4, 3. Now, what do you observe? We are not going to write 1 and 4 again because we have already written it. So if we write it, it becomes uh, a repetition. Okay. If we write it, it becomes uh, a repetition. So repetition is not allowed. So from this now, you will agree with me that A, set A is equal to set B. Okay. Now, let's look at set C. What do you think about set C? Set C says the first counting numbers. So, we know our counting numbers are 1, 2, 3, and so on. So, we are told to get the first four. So, the first four are 1, 2, 3, and 4. So, you observe that this set C is equal to set A and B we have above. What do you observe? Here, we change the ordering. Okay, here we started start writing from the least element to the highest element. But in the other set, A and B, we altered the arrangement. So when we alter, it does not really matter. Like we have said, the order is not important in a set. Therefore, A is equal to B and B is equal to C. So another thing to look at this is set D. So let's look at set D. If you look at set D, what do you observe? We have the 4... 1, 3, and 5. So you observe that this element 5, so this 5 we have, this 5 is not in A. So remember the way we write it, it's not in A. The same 5 again is not in B. Okay? Even C, 5 is not even in C. Okay? So the element 5 is not uh, in C. And again, D, the same element, even in D, you observe that a has the element 2. So this element 2 is in A. This element 2 is in B. This element 2 is in C. But element 2. But this element 2 is not uh, in D. So you observe that this, this set D is different from other elements. So what we write? We say that A now is now equals to B. And B is now equals to C. Then we now say that the set D. The set D is not equal to A. Okay? The same set D. Okay? The same element D is not equal to the set B. And again, the same set D is not equal to set uh, C, as you can see. And you remember our notation. Whenever we write this, we are familiar with this. This means uh, equality. That's the equal sign, equality. But whenever we write this with this, this is a negation. This means uh, not equal to. So the other one, we write it uh, equal to. Then when we cross it, it means not uh, equal to. So we look at this first set and we find out that the first three sets, A, B, and C, are equal to themselves. But D is not equal to any of these uh, three sets. So now we want to pay attention to what we refer as an empty set. So either we call it empty set or a null set. 
So when a set, a given set contains no elements, we call it empty set or a null set. So we have two ways of representing it. So an empty set, supposing A is an empty set, okay, we can write it like this. So we write our normal called bracket and we write nothing there. So this means an empty set. So this means empty set. Some people might decide to call it null set. Then another way to represent this is this. We can also use a symbol and call it phi. So A can be equal to this. So this means again an empty set. Okay, this is a symbol to represent an empty set. And this phi, this thing is called phi. That, is, that symbol is known as uh, phi. If you're interested in the name, we call it phi. So we'll look at an example now. Let's look at an example on the board. So we have x. So x is representing what? Is a set of primary one pupil who is a headmistress. So you go to a primary school and you see a child that is in primary one and somebody tells you is the headmistress. It's not possible. So when you talk about such sets, we now say that x is uh, empty. So write it uh, like this. Then note that if you have something of this nature, if you have a set and you have zero in the set, you have zero in this set, for instance. This set is not empty. So this thing is not empty. It contains an element. So this thing is not empty. This is not empty. Why? Because it contains only one element. And what is the element? Zero. So it contains one element. So we can actually write that the number of elements, supposing I call this set B, so B equals to this. So I can say that the number of elements in set B is now equals to is now equals to one. So it contains an element. So it's not empty. But if you have a call bracket in this form, you have your call bracket without writing anything inside it, that means that that set is there. Empty. It's an empty set. Then you can also look at an example. Supposing I say senior secondary school student who is uh, a day old, it is not uh, possible. So such set is uh, empty. 